almost it'd be coming up two years in a few months that I've 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 been all in. I'm all in from the get go. Like you know, from that amateur career, and I'm all in for like for pro. Like nothing's changed. I've been grinding six days a week for the last four or five years anyway. And like, but now like I'm doing it without having to work. So now I'm I'm getting in all those extra S and C sessions, those extra recovery sessions. Like I'm just being a better athlete every day. I'm just getting that a little bit better. Um, and obviously that's all we can do. Obviously as humans as well. You know, on and off the mat. So yeah, it's just, yeah, just all in, baby, yeah, all in. Oh! First of all, introducing our challenger. Out of the uh, blue corner. He's going to step in and he does it all over. Let's bring on the boo! This is Eternal MMA. All right, everybody, welcome back to another edition here on the Eternal Insiders podcast. We are being joined today in this one by the Honey Bear, Damien Villar, ahead of his pro debut at Eternal 84, that card coming up on May 24th at the Liberty Hall in Sydney, New South Wales. Damien, thanks for joining me here for the first time, brother. Pleasure to have you on board. How are things with you, man? Yeah, going good, man. Um, yeah, just obviously three, three, three and a half weeks out now. Yeah, it's getting getting close. So um, It's getting very close. Yeah, just... Yeah, just, you know, just all the finishing touches and, um, yeah, like, the, you know, all the, all the hard work's, you know, all, almost over and all done. Like, we just, you know, it's just those finishing touches and then the preparation. And, um, and, yeah, just, you know, looking forward to fight week. That's when, the, you know, the fun begins. Like, once you get there, it's just it's all smooth sailing and it's ready to perform. I mean, we've caught you in the middle of preparation here, haven't we, man? I mean, you're at the gym, like, you know, you're still on the rashies and everything, so kind enough to yeah. join us here while you're in the middle of prep. Thank you very much for that, but uh, the grind doesn't stop, mate. No, nah, it's here, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I've, uh, you know, just at it all day. It's uh, one one training to another, really. It's a, there's barely barely any downtime. It's, you know, it's a, full, it's a full-time job being an, uh, being an athlete. I can certainly appreciate that, man. Now, first things first, the honey bear. I mean, I've talked to a few honey badgers and everything in my time. There's a few famous honey badgers in around the NRL. You know, the honey badger himself, you know, Daniel Ricciardo. But the honey bear, this is the first for me. Where does the honey bear come from? I don't think that's been your nickname since you first started fighting. Correct me if I'm wrong, but give us the backstory on the honey bear. Um, yeah, it was, uh, well, it was originally Pooh Bear, just like, obviously. I, I think it was Pooh Bear. Were you originally Pooh Bear on Instagram, I think, at some point? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I'm um, just, yeah, so just, yeah, transferred over. But, um, yeah, it was, uh, to do with just, I, like, just love my honey. I just love my honey. It's like my, my pre-intra post. It's just, a, just get those, uh, quick release, uh, you know, sugar carbs in. And yes. just a bit of energy, energy for the training. And, um, yeah, just always... Bloody flipping it open and squirting it in, and I love it, man. Yeah, I mean, probably the beard and everything, the kind of the grizzly look and everything, right? It ties in a little bit with the bear side of things. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, having uh, like, well, I was, you know, I was, yeah, doubling, uh, you know, on my socials, it'd be you know, King Honey Bear, um, and you know, having a English background and Croatian background, yes, um, as you know, obviously being born in Australia and being Australian as, you know, it sort of all sort of ties in with the, you know, the royalty of England and yes, just, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the bear, uh, obviously not to uh, be mistaken with the Balkan bear, who's uh, another Adelaide boy who's um, obviously, you know, making, making waves in his, his own right. And uh, yeah. And then obviously, yeah, just the Australian honey is the, you know, the best honey there is, you know. I like how it all ties in, man. Well, let's talk about that. Speaking about Adelaide, I haven't talked to many uh, Adelaide MMA fighters in my time since I've been here. What's the Adelaide MMA scene like down that way, man? I'm in Victoria myself, so you're across, you're just, uh, you're across to the left of me over in Adelaide. Uh, training out of Element Mixed Martial Arts. Uh, what What is the scene yep. like there uh, down in Adelaide for Mixed Martial Arts? Yeah, it's good. Like we got obviously some, um, you know, key key gyms, obviously for, you know, little, little old Adelaide. Uh, we have a few key gyms and putting out obviously some you know some talented fighters and have their own like have a little you know stock pool of amateur fighters coming up um and a couple of guys obviously on the pro scene as well uh yeah I've just, like sort of mentioned uh with brando obviously he's just moved over you know to new zealand and trained with ckb and um but you know he's 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 always from adelaide and he uh you know, he always fl he flies the flag for Adelaide as well. And people like Antonio Caruso, another Adelaide boy, obviously having international 
uh, on the international stage as well um, throughout his career. And obviously also Shane Mitchell, you know, there's guys making those like next steps. Uh, but yeah, still no one yet from Adelaide to crack the UFC just yet. So let's be know, the first still, one, baby. Let's get that story written right yeah, now. Yeah. Still, yeah. Still, a, still a couple of years away, you know, but uh, that's, that's, that's the goal. You know, we, uh, I, I quit my full-time job 18 months ago. Like just, I was, I was like, this isn't for me. I just need to, I need to commit to this. And obviously doing that as an amateur, but uh, you know, like obviously there's a, there's a big move. Like there's obviously some guys that are professional and have been professional for the last few years and they still haven't made that commitment. So it's like, you know, I commit now and it's like, you just, I'm all in, you know, with everything. And obviously it's, I think it's obviously shown and paid dividends throughout the like final, uh, final of my amateur career. Um, you know, obviously on that, on an unbeaten streak at the moment, on a hot streak. And, you know, I think that credits, like the, the hard work's created success. It isn't, you know, it isn't just overnight luck or anything. It's, you know, it's hard work consistently. Sure is, man. I mean, for those that don't know, Damien Villar, 8-1 and one as an amateur coming in, as we said at the top of the show, to make his pro debut at Eternal 84. Very exciting stuff. Very tough, very gritty fighter. And we're going to ask him all about that in terms of his fighting style, what he's looking forward to in terms of this upcoming fight. But if we just cast back a little bit, man, in terms of how you, uh, you know, found yourself in mixed martial arts. I know you played some sport before that, uh, but you got into MMA, uh, I believe, through getting yourself into a jiu-jitsu class. I believe you referenced it as a very humbling experience, uh, I think, going with a friend and getting yourself into jiu-jitsu. Can you cast your mind back to that time and uh, tell us what you remember about that experience? Yeah, oh, it's, uh, it is a yeah, very distant memory. It was about, yeah, six, seven years ago now. It was, um, yeah, and like, I was still, I was playing gridiron at the time, um, very heavily into that. And it's, yeah, I went just, you know, once with a mate who's been training on and off himself and yeah, just really enjoyed it. And obviously, yeah, like, you, you know, you, you get your ass kicked if, you know, you <laughs> maybe not at a very good gym if you don't get your ass kicked, you know, like, yeah, it's like, yeah, without obviously, uh, it wasn't like a full, full gym, like gym bros, but like, you know, just destroying you being like dicks or anything it was just you know just technical you know just just beating you just because you don't know until you know you know yeah it's the experience <laughs> it's learning like you know the whole yeah life. yeah you're like oh like yeah this is yeah like yeah um humbling and yeah obviously you gotta have that bit of humility about you i find that's yeah also when it goes to like that successful mindset I can certainly appreciate that, man. You did just mention there too, uh, gridiron was something that you were into. Uh, NFL, American football, for those that don't know, uh, we call us call it uh, we call it gridiron over here. What sort of drew you to that? I think you said you played footy as well. Now, when you say footy, being that you're from South Australia, can I assume you mean Aussie rules footy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we're, yeah. we're footy footy down here as well, as far as Victorians go. AFL. Yeah. Normally, I'm talking to a lot of the guys from you know like New <laughs> South Wales and Queensland. I say I played footy, and I got to double check. You know, it's normally rugby up that way, but uh, yeah. American football man, uh, how did you get into that? Uh so yeah, I was yeah, playing Aussie Rules footy. Uh I was at uh so for the you know equivalent, I guess, of the VFL, the SANFL, I was at a like in a jun- junior development squad uh for one of the local SANFL teams. Uh and yeah, like so I was, you know, quite yeah, I think I've always I've always been pretty like, you know, I've always been an athletic sporty sporty kid and um just always like applied myself and I was, yeah, having some success there, but um, just naturally being, always being a bigger kid, I've, uh, you know, I wasn't the fastest uh, running the 3K times. I served my purpose, but yeah, obviously as you go through those ranks, you know, they obviously are looking for a particular sort of build and uh, attributes, uh, et cetera. But yeah, it just wasn't, you know, it wasn't cut out for me in the end. And uh, when I didn't make uh, the under 16s or 17s at that time, I was just like, oh, well, you know, you know, I was a little, little bit upset about it, you know, I was like, oh, you know, well, that, that's, that's, that done. So I was like, um, just went home and I was just on Google. Jeez, it was probably dial up back then. Jeez, I can't remember. It was yeah, so man. long ago. <laughs> yeah. God, the sound's uh, still ringing in my head. Like, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I was just like on YouTube and I was like, just, I don't even know how I stumbled upon it. It was just like, oh, like, and like watching all these like hardest hit compilations of that's where it all starts where it always starts yeah. yes yeah and i was like oh this is amazing this is awesome and i was just like, oh you know grew on adelaide and then yeah the local website came up and yeah found my closest team and like it wasn't too far away and 
you know, obviously didn't drive or anything like that. You know, I was, yeah, I think, yeah, 16 or so. I was like, oh, I had to get mum to drop me off you know, to the local club. and Yeah, to play you know, what? Like, yeah, where, where am I taking you? Yeah, yeah it's like, yeah, all, all, yeah, all, all new. For, like, yeah, I didn't even know it existed here. And I think a lot of people still don't know it exists in Australia as well. Obviously, Victoria's got quite a, a substantial league, but we only have five teams in Adelaide. It's, um, yeah, not, not as, uh, as, like, as big as other states. But, yeah, I just jumped into that and that was also the same it was a, it was a humbling experience i got flatlined run over by someone i was reckon he's probably like four foot five uh and just ran straight through me and over me and i was like yeah put on my ass and i was like well yeah i've got to learn some technique here so yeah yeah it's um, not just all about the brawn yeah well actually it's funny uh shout out to uh that man uh that's michael Filippo, also known as racka racka so right was, uh, yes yeah, wait what used to play that was him. Yeah, we used to play gridiron together, and uh, he Fair put me on my ass. And, there you yeah, go. He put me on my ass, my first second, right. he put me on my bum, and uh, he's not even yeah, that nah. big, man. He's like, he's like, uh, he's like yeah. sort of skinny, mate. Like, they're, they're not big dudes. I mean, I haven't watched their videos for a while, but like, he's yeah, he's not a built guy. Wild. Nah, there you nah, go. He's not a not a big guy, but yeah, he's just you know he's, he's been doing it for a few years at that point. And I was I was in my first session and. Uh, Right yeah, on. Yeah, just trampled over me, and like I was like, oh, it was good. It was again, like you're humbling. And you're like, oh, cool. I I need to I need to learn how to do this, and yeah, obviously went on to have a like quite a successful career in that for you know almost oh, eight nine years. Uh, you know, yeah, winning multiple accolades and uh, yeah, and a couple of championship, and then again just sort of lost the passion for that and looking for that new challenge. And again, just I was still playing when I stumbled upon. Uh, jiu-jitsu and was yeah only training you know once or twice a week jiu-jitsu while I was still playing gridiron for a couple of years sure um and then obviously I was like oh I'll, I'll look quite like this and I want to commit to it and that's when I decided to you know start training five six days a week and learning striking as well and everything else uh, so like you weren't necessarily like a fan of American sports or anything like that previous to getting into this no, nah, like I, 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 now I am obviously after having played and um, you yeah, know, I enjoy watching the NFL. But uh, you follow a team now nah, in the NFL, the, or? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a Browns man. You're I'm, a Browns I'm man. A, I was gonna try I'm and take a, a guess. Man. I was like, ooh, I, I wanted to guess something, and I was gonna be like, I don't, I don't have any of the basis off, but I was thinking maybe like a Detroit Lions or something like that, or like a nah, Green nah, Bay, uh, Cleveland. I'm, I'm, I'm all about the underdog story. I like, I like, I, you know, they still haven't won a Super Bowl. Well, you know, sure. we're going to get there one year, and when we do, it's going to be amazing. Let's go. Uh, who, oh, God, who's, um, because I was a Texans fan for a while, and it's Deshaun Watson, he ended up in Cleveland, hey? Like, he's like the quarterback yeah, over there now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah having, a bit, having a bit of a quarterback struggle at the moment, yes. but we'll get there. We're, we're on the train, baby. Let's go. All right, let's go, Brown. <laughs> so, very cool, man. That, that's a great story. Um, Talk to a lot of people that, you know, start in one code or another and eventually find their way to mixed martial arts and, uh, and here we are ahead of your pro debut. But, um, you know, just you know, talking about your career and everything that, you know, you sort of said in the past about, you know, why you're doing this. Uh, you're, you're a father and not very long a father, right? Uh, you're doing this for your little girl. You know, you said that you want to make a career out of this, you know, that, uh, you know, you want to build a life for her and your family and everything. You know, you've referenced that, you know, yourself, you had a bit of a rough childhood. Can, can we sort of assume that, you know, from the experiences, I guess, that you've had growing up, you know, that you want to take that, turn that into something positive for your little girl and really make this, you know, not just a career for yourself, uh, but for her as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess it's like, you know, it's all about, um, yeah. Like I think for me, it's like, yeah, breaking that cycle and just, yeah, creating, creating something that I guess I, I wish I had and I didn't have and just, yeah, giving obviously the best that I can give for like for my daughter. And um, it's, uh, it's, well, mate, you're fresh. It's uh while we're on the topic, it's it's still hot off the press. Uh, I think only close family and only a few close friends know, but there's another one on the way. We've got a bit of breaking news here. There's a second one coming. Yeah. Oh, my God. Let's yeah. go, man. Congratulations. That's amazing. Yeah, so, yeah, we've got a, yeah, so, um, my yeah, daughter's uh, 16 months old now. And yes. we've got a, uh, got a little baby boy due in October, so. Fantastic, man. You're yeah. one, a little, little bit of breaking news here on the show too. You're one month behind me for my firstborn, man. So I'm, I'm coming oh, in beautiful. September. So how about that, eh? Hey? All right. So another little girl coming. A little boy, you said, sorry. Uh, yeah, a little boy, yeah. yeah. One yeah, of yeah, each. So, yeah. yeah, beautiful. Fantastic, yeah. man. So we got some extra inspiration coming to this fight. We're fighting for our one and a half at this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, just, yeah, it's just that, extra drive and like you know 
doesn't mean like people don't have the same drive when they don't. But like I said, like almost it'd be coming up two years in a few months that I've 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 been all in. I, I'm all in from the get go. Like you know from that amateur career, and I'm all in for like for pro. Like nothing's changed. I've been grinding six days a week for the last four or five years anyway. And like but now like I'm doing it without having to work. So now I'm I'm getting in all those extra S and C sessions. Those extra recovery sessions like i'm just being a better athlete every day i'm just getting that a little bit better um and obviously that's all we can do obviously as humans as well you know on and off the mat so yeah it's just yeah just all in baby and all in and like yeah obviously i yeah gonna pro debut and i said plans don't change obviously one and oh and then every other fight after that it's like it's a one and oh every fight's one and oh just just gonna keep winning and Obviously, like we've seen on the scene, uh, Australian scene, there's people like making it. You know, you get to get you get a good run together, four, five, and oh, there's 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 chances there. There's contender series. Like, obviously, they've locked in obviously numerous events over the next few years um, with the UFC in Australia, Perth, or well, Sydney. You know, there's there's going to be chances and occasions. You just obviously got to get got to get those wins on the on the board and. Um, you know, th- things are going to happen. Like, it's it's not a... Before, I think it was uh, very you know, doubtful. You think, oh, I'm going to go to the UFC. Like, it's not, you know... There's probably a, a bit of self-doubt, but then also, like, uh, you know, you don't think it's really actually, like, viable. But, like, just we've seen so many guys just come through. And, you know, obviously, a great example this weekend, Urseg. 100%. Um, you know, was well overdue. And now he's fighting for a champ- UFC championship. And, like, you know, you just, there's opportunity, like... JDM, surely he's in the mix for the, like the next one as well. Like again, like they they get there, and then obviously we get there, and we're putting like we're up there with the best um, in the world, and we've proven that as a as a country. And we get there, and we take our opportunities. Um, again, same thing. They string a few wins together, and then good things can happen. So. I love it, man. I mean, that's an incredible mindset. It's certainly a burgeoning scene here in Australia. Steven Urseg, of course, this weekend fighting for that title, but only a few fights into his UFC career. So it just goes to show you, man, it's like, it's such a, it's a game of just being ready and and, and positioning and, you know, ready for the call up and and being ready to go at sort of the right time. Of course, there's the grind that you go through in the amateur career, which we're about to talk about. You know, you're starting your pro career now and it's just about taking those opportunities when they come your way. And you certainly took those, as you said, I mean, what, an eight fight winning streak, uh, you were eight and one as an amateur. Uh, the the lone loss that you had on your record uh, was your amateur debut, uh, which ended unfortunately for you within six seconds. Uh, quite a yeah. heavy head kick knockout. Um, so it was like you got that one out of the way immediately, just done like within seconds, and then just went on an absolute charge there. I think six finishes uh, as an amateur coming into your pro yeah. debut now. Like casting back to that, just before we talk about that streak, um, you know, having sort of that start to your amateur career, or you know, let's not even call it that, just the start of your competitive mixed martial arts career. You know, what was that sort of like to try and, I guess, move past from that moment? Because you went on that streak, as we said. Was there anything that you sort of had to tweak in order to kind of go on that streak going forward? Or did you just chalk it up to, hey, look, this is mixed martial arts. I got caught. Uh, we just move on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of every Like, there's a few variables there. But, like, I think it was, yeah, like, it was, I was more, like, upset that I didn't get there. Like, showcase, like I said, because it happens so quickly. It's like, yeah. if, like, yeah, it happened even in the first round, but like near the end of it, you know, like, but it just happened so quickly that it was more like I zigged when I should have zagged. And you were throwing I a leg kick get... at the same time. I think I was looking yeah, like, you threw... yeah, just, it um, so yeah, it didn't get to showcase myself, I guess. And like, I just felt like, yeah, I just, I, I felt like I wasn't done. Like, I hadn't given it my everything. Cause yeah, barely even got started. So, um, you know, and like, yeah, like, you know, a lesser man probably would have never have done the sport again. You know, we see, you know, amount of times you see, I'm sure all gyms get it. Like, People come to the gym. They want to be a fighter. Yeah, they but get they that one. They go on. They, yeah. see, they see the um. They think it's all glitz and glamour from from that one night of action. But obviously, you know, a lot can go into that. Like obviously, my last fight was that you know end of September last year. You know, it's it, just like that without even trying. It's been eight months. Like it's it's a long time to just keep training for like for, with for not like for nothing essentially. Like you know, it's not for nothing. But you know, like there's there's nobody. It's not a game every Saturday. Uh, you train twice a week in a game every Saturday, like most other sports. There's a lot of unknowns. Um, yeah. And it's just like, yeah, you know, people, it's like, you, you know, it's just, you, you find out quickly, you know, within the, the first month or two for the people that stick around. Cause it's like, yeah, it's not just a, uh, 
an eight week flight camp and then you jump in and so you know it's years of years of learning years of hard work obviously with multiple disciplines um yeah and obviously lots of refining obviously we're still you know even you know UFC champions to this day they're still we're still learning we're constantly learning it's always evolving the sport um as we've seen obviously over the last two decades is massive uh the growth in like in mixed martial arts uh and obviously yeah the UFC uh but yeah uh, so, um, sorry, I lost play. We were talking about rambling on. No, you're um, right. Yeah. You keep going. Yeah. No. Nah, um, yeah. No. Nah, sorry. I, I think we'll just talk. I mean, like you know, we, we we talk about. I was going to ask you in terms of even just coming up to this lead up, as far as like you know, getting you know that first kind of loss out of the way. And I mean, it's the amateurs, right? I mean, what are the amateurs for? Yeah. We're there to learn on the scene, you know, once we kind of go to our pro debut, you know, that that's something that we don't discuss anymore. And I think there's a really good point there. And you said a lesser man, you know, might not have come back after something like that. Like it was a pretty heavy knockout. And I don't think a lot of people know that, you know, something like that can turn a person away. We're, you know, we're not involved in mixed martial arts. We're not taking these shots to the head and that sort of thing. We don't necessarily know what something like that feels like. And, you know, if it's me, I'm not coming back. You turn that around and went on an eight fight winning streak. I think you found a lot about yourself as far as what you are as a mixed martial artist. We certainly found out that you're a finisher because you had six finishes on that record. What, what do you sort of think was the key, uh, you know, for going on that streak, but also, you know, like not just kind of going through and sort of learning on the way, but showing that you're a finisher even at that level? Um, yeah, I, like, yeah, I, um, and I'll see, it's all, I'm keep my as well. After that, obviously, yeah, um, horrific uh, debut. I, uh, it took me almost two years to get back in, but that wasn't through like much. Like you know, I, um, I was supposed to fight six months later. I got a staph infection. My knee blew up and it was all swollen. And like, I just, um, you had to pull out. I was like, you know, I oh, just, you know, another setback. Um, and then, and then that was around the time. Then the buddy, uh, I remember I was with you with my partner walking, walking down by the beach and you know, we overheard some, you know, some two middle-aged women yes. talking about this this COVID business. And I was going like, to say oh, it's what? right around that time, wasn't yeah. it? Because what it was uh, it was July, uh, April twenty nineteen was that first amateur fight, and then yeah, the next one was February twenty twenty one. So there was a sizable gap. And I was going to say it, it's always COVID related whenever you look at these records. Yeah, like I said, like I said, I was supposed to have one, you know, just before COVID came in, and I had to pull out for the unfortunately with the staff, and then um, yeah, finally get back like, looking for one like early or later in that year or early in 2020 and then obviously yeah, the COVID started happening and um you know obviously that was the debacle that it was yes it uh, was so yeah then there was you know obviously another setback and obviously that was even harder because you know we couldn't obviously you couldn't do your grind it, like it was it was just so obviously difficult for everybody yeah um everywhere in the world um you know and I guess you know we're pretty lucky we didn't have it as bad as a lot of other countries even still though yeah in Europe so um, you know, count our blessings a little bit there, but obviously, yeah, we all struggled in different ways, and uh, yeah, so then finally, obviously, that opportunity, like you know, when it was all sort of cleared up and we could compete again, obviously, yeah, it'd been almost two years. I was, you know, basically just, yeah, so I was just super hungry, and like, I think that's why, like, my I can say, like, contributed to my success, like, like, yeah, I've, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm a hungry dog, and like. You've got to, big dog's got to eat, you know? Was it uh, almost like a bit of a blessing in a way? Can you count it like that? Like you have that sort of that first loss and all of a sudden you've just got this big break, you know, like you're, you're growing, you know, physically, mentally, everything in between this sort of big gap and you get this sort of big layoff and then you just come in fresh, you know what I mean? And then you just kind of go on this run. Like, you know, obviously, you know, maybe if you take the time back again, when you can't have COVID, you'd love to jump sort of straight back into it. But to you know, come off something like that and have that gap and then go on this run, like it's, you could almost sort of call it a blessing in a way. Yeah, um, yeah, I I do call the um like that loss a, a blessing in disguise now. Like, um, you know, I think and you see it like there's um, I guess I've always thought like you know I know I know my potential and I I know how hard I work and I I can see that in me and like I think you get a lot of the kids these days have that potential, um, and they go on they win their first fight and then obviously again like you've just won your first amateur fight like you haven't won like a UFC championship they think they're amazing. Um, and like, I think it, you, mentally they go down this different, a different pathway. Um, so I think, yeah, losing and then, yeah, having that, um, yeah, like, I guess I carry a bit of a chip on my shoulder and like, I still do it to this day. Like I just always have a chip on my shoulder and 
um, you know, I've always got something to prove and like, yeah, I just always like thriving. I like you said, setbacks just only fuel me more. Um, yeah. Like, and so same with Browns, I, I like, you know, I love being under, I love fighting in someone else's home state. And I, I like, yeah, I love all, I thrive off that. I, I love it. Like, um, yeah, it's, it's, I find it easier than fighting in my home, home state in front of my family and friends. Like I'm happy to come be the, uh, you know, the, the party pooper in another state. Well, it's an away game for you, as we said, uh, coming over to the Liberty Hall in New South Wales, Sydney, uh, for where that card is at Eternal 84. Uh, your opponent for your uh, Prairie debut, Alfred Stoddard. Uh, Alfred Stoddard, my apologies. Uh, your emotions coming into this one. Alfred, 2-2 uh, two and two as a professional, so he does have a little bit of experience there, of course, in the professional ranks against you making your pro debut. Uh, your thoughts and feelings ahead of this one? Yeah, I think it's, it's going to be a good good match. It's like stylistically, um, it's going to be quite a good match. So I'm looking forward to it. It's um, yeah, he's got that more experience. But um, to be honest, it was it was hard. Like I said, we've been trying to been trying to get a match up for the last, uh, you know, perhaps since the start of the year, been trying to get a match up uh, and just been struggling. So uh, you know, there's a few people messaging me. I'll, I won't go on uh, name names without messaging me saying they want to run it back and all that and we're oh yeah cool let's just set it up and like then you know when push comes to shove they all disappear so it's like facebook um, marketplace like is this still available and you're like yeah it's still available i'm still here good to go and then just like yeah. get smoke screen man he's ghosted um, <laughs> yeah, but he but he deleted his instagram and all i was like oh okay it's like um, yeah, you get left yeah, high and dry like, yeah but yeah so it's just yeah you know i said i was like what, what are we doing here like you know like and you know it's yeah i think it's a it's a yeah, like I said it's a good stylistic matchup, and you know, one of those things you know you're never gonna not take a fight you don't think you can win. I you know every fight we take, we're, we're like there's always a pathway to victory. If you can see a pathway to victory, there's every fight's winnable. So, um, yeah, I I just I just think it's gonna gonna be a good one, and like um yeah, I think it's a great pro debut. Um, it looks looks good for me. You know, I come in and be a two and two guy, you know, and then obviously I set myself up entering the pro ranks and then I'm just going to, yeah, I'll go on and, you know, get onto the next. And it's just every fight's just going one and oh, you just win the next one, you win the next one. Like I said, a few later, now we're, now we're talking Dana, you know. That's it, baby. Now we've got the vision clearly set there. And I mean, as we said, you know, making your pro debut, man, I mean, there's a, there's a bit of tape out there on you in terms of people want to jump on YouTube and sort of see what you're all about. Uh, for those that don't know, as we said, Damien is certainly a finisher, uh, certainly a well-rounded athlete, brings a lot of power to his game. Uh, very powerful, especially from the top, got a good ground and pound game. Uh, as I said, certainly look like a very well-rounded fighter, but you know, someone comes to you or someone comes to me and says, Hey, this Damien Valar on the main card here for Eternal 84, what's he all about? What's he like when he's in the cage? What can we tell people about what to expect with you? How, how would you sort of describe who and what you are when you step foot inside the cage as a mixed martial artist? Uh, oh, I reckon it's just relentless, you know, just pressure and just like, uh, yeah, a lot of, like, yeah, from the last fight, most of their corner and everyone, like, you know, they just, they said you just got that dog in you. And like I said, I'm just... I'm I'm there to fight, like you know you and you, you. That's what you're gonna see, you know. I'm I'm not bloody. There's no there's no shying away here. Like wherever the wherever the fight goes, I'm happy. Like we we'll, we we'll get down dirty. It's gonna be you know we we'll fight it out to the end. Like you know gonna be gonna be able that some of that warrior shit. Uh, you know, sort of like Max is talking about. You know, the gladiators. Like it doesn't matter. Like every side. Yeah, we just you know it is a fight. Anything can happen. And like yeah, I'm, wherever wherever the fight goes and whatever, like, I'm going to, I'm going to be in your face. I'm going to be there. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm not going to stop hunting like you, you gotta, you gotta put me out to make me stop coming at you. The honey bear wins his pro debut. How does the honey bear get it done in his first, uh, pro match for eternal 84, man? What are you thinking? I'm thinking predicting TKO finish, baby. TKO finish any particular round or we, it's just going to happen at some time. We'll keep our cards close to our chest. What, what are we, uh, what are we thinking uh, in that regard? Yeah. It, like it, it comes. And I, I think like we were saying with my amateur career, I see with the six finishes. I'm not. And a lot, a lot of them were in the first round. I think it was like, I think it was on a three fight street where I was in the first round. Like, I wasn't hunting it. It's just, I'm just doing my, I'm just sticking to my game plan. I'm sticking to my strengths and they, the, the opportunities arise and obviously if there's an opportunity I'm, I'm taking that so 
Uh, you know, it again, he's going to be obviously a very senior, more experienced guy. Obviously, uh, you know, he's a bit more used to those those pro rounds and those that difference between the pro rounds with the five minutes and um, the addition of elbows. But yeah, like it, it, it'll come when it comes. Uh, but if you're a betting man, may, maybe put it on round two. Maybe put it on round two. Okay, we'll see when it comes. But as we said, Damien Villar, uh, it's a very exciting pre debut, man. This is why I wanted to have you on here because, you know, everything that you've had up until this point is a fantastic story. And I'm very much looking forward to this one. Looking forward to seeing your fight at the Liberty Hall. Fantastic little venue that that is uh, up in Sydney. You had the pleasure of being there when they were there for the first time last year. So uh, you'll very much enjoy it there, man. I think it's a venue very suited to your style because it's kind of like that. I don't know. There's like people kind of up above the cage and everything like, kind of looking down into it. And it's a very tight atmosphere around there. So I think it's very much something that you'll thrive in. Uh, hopefully for yourself coming out with that win, man. I've got one last one before uh, I'll let you go. Um, you know, you said uh, in the past that, you know, you feel there's a greatness that you possess inside you, right? Um, you know, you don't just want to be a national champion. You want to be a world champion. You know, obviously we're at the start of our pro career now, you know, but when it's all said and done, you know, you chasing the dream, what will it take for you, I guess, or what does it take for you to say, I've truly achieved this dream? Um, what does success look like in your mind when it's all said and done? Um, it's obviously, yeah, like I said, it's like, it's one thing people just, I think if people are a bit short side, they're like, oh, I want to get to the UFC. Like they, they make it, you know, again, there's been a few guys from Oceania, Australia, New Zealand, who have made it and then you've stayed still had a couple of fights but you know they and then they just disappear because they obviously didn't get enough wins and they just you know weren't what the UFC wanted again it's it's one it's an achievement to get there but like well they don't want to just get there we want to like all these like other guys we mentioned like Erseg and JDM like we get there and put on a show like put on a show like beat these guys like obviously I'm watching you know watching the UFC most weekends and uh, you know, paying special attention to that middleweight division. I'm like, these guys, some of these guys on the world stage, like they're not that good. I just, I just, some of them just like, they, they, I can beat these guys. And it's like, again, it's very early days in the journey, but obviously I know that. And like I said, it's, I know realistically it's a, it's at least a two year, a minimum two year. Like if I, hopefully I want to hit three fights in this year. So, you know, hopefully go, you know, get through them come out unscathed from each fight, you know, get obviously if you can get a few finishes here and there, you're not too like banged up. You can have it like, you know, you have another one quite a quick turnaround. I like to keep active. I don't like these long layovers. Um, you probably noticed in some day when you go through my like record is, well, I fought one like two weeks after each other. And like um, in one of my, like, yeah, two of my amateur fights, it's like, just, I like to keep, keep active. If I'm unscathed, I'm ready to go. I want to jump back in and, you know, the plans to be, you know, one and oh, and then after, like, I still want to get three in this year. So that's hopefully three and oh, and then next year we're knocking on, you know, knocking on that door, maybe one or two more wins away from having that opportunity. So I know that's still two, you know, that's two hard years of work still. I've got to rock every day. I got to rock up, be accountable to myself. I put in the work every day. It, it's just, like I said, it's a job now. Um, and I love what I do, but there's also just like when you work a regular, whether you work nine to five, seven to three, some days you just can't be fucked, but and that's when you just I can't be fucked. Some days I still just go and get the work done and get the work in because it's what I got to do to obviously achieve the greatness that I like. I feel that I do possess inside me. So um, yeah, it's yeah, just rocking up every day, again accumulating those wins, um, and then yeah, obviously getting getting to the UFC and not just getting there, but yeah, beating these guys, getting that you know, get another contract. Well, get get some five six fights in. Cool, hope, you know. Hopefully, do well once we get there. You know, then you never know what's going to happen. We've seen, especially in the middleweight division, the UFC since obviously Izzy's been dethroned. It's it's here, there, and everywhere. Like it doesn't take much to go on a go on a bit of a you know, three or four fight streak in the UFC and get a, a get a shot at a world championship. Like you just got to obviously you know you believe believe that and see that you that you can do that yourself. So. Um, yeah, I guess one quote that I've someone like again another Adelaide guy who's you know doing the stuff on the international level like Antonio Caruso he said many years ago and I've and ever since he said that it's always stuck in my brain and this was when I was probably like one or two fights in my amateur career uh, it's like dream believe work hard achieve and that's and that's all of that's all I'm all I'm doing you're streaming and believing and having that you know there's no self doubt anymore it's all that self belief. 
believe that this is a actual, you know, a pathway that is like can happen. And yeah, he's putting that work. And obviously, he said you, you it's a, it can be a beautiful, uh, a uh, devastating mistress. This sport, uh, or was what did uh, what, who was it? Was it Bryce Mitchell or someone else? Uh, saying like you know, it's like the. <laughs> Fighting's like a bloody, like a neighborhood hole or something. Like, it doesn't love you back, you know. Something, That's you know, the one, yes, you know, yes. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. This is obviously all in the perfect world. I, I, I might get a loss or might get a loss or two. That's fine. I see. You just got to keep, you just keep working and keep working towards it. Um, You know, in the perfect world, obviously, yeah, four or five, and no one we're in. But if, you know, losses happen, it's a sport, anything can happen. You just got to take those and keep moving forward, and keep the same. The goal doesn't change. We just got to, um, you know, it might take a little bit longer now, and or you know, um, etc. So, but yeah, it's the goal's still the same. We get there and and thrive. I love it, man. What an absolute message that is. Damien Villar coming in hot, and it all starts here, May twenty fourth, coming in for his pro debut against Alfred Stoddard at the Liberty Hall in Sydney, New South Wales. Absolutely looking forward to that one, of course. Uh, Jacinta Austin versus Amina Hedaya at the top of the bill for the women's flyweight title there. Damien, thank you very much for joining me on the show here for the very first time, man. Absolute pleasure to talk to you. Uh, all the best on May 24th, man. I can't wait to see that fight. Everybody needs to be tuning in UFC Fight Pass if you're not going there and seeing it live in person. I do believe tickets might still be available. If not, make sure you're getting that subscription and seeing the honey bear in action because what a fighter he is. It's going to be a cracking one, hopefully for Damien himself coming out with his first pro victory and uh, looking forward to those lofty goals ahead, man. But it all starts here for May 24th. So thanks again, and uh, we'll see you on the next one, man. Uh, hopefully for uh, talking about your first pro debut win. Beautiful. Cheers. Thank you.